Hello, welcome back. This is Kenshin1913, and we are Let's Playing Dragon Quest IV for the iOS and Android. In the last episode, we made it to Bath. And, uh, also we got Hank Hoffman Jr., who gave us his, who's letting us borrow his horsey Mary Lou across the desert, so that we may search for a tornado go to Loon. Anyways, what I'm going to do is stay at the inn. We're going to explore the town, then explore the town at night. Yep, this is probably going to be more of an exploring episode. I know that these episodes are going to be kind of... There's going to be a couple of episodes like this where it's kind of going to be exploring towns, doing party talk. Uh, but eventually that will lower. These types of episodes will lower because um, eventually we're going to explore every town and uh, we're not going to need to have to talk to everybody and do all that. We'll just be able to get on with our journey. But this is the beautiful part about role-playing games is that you can explore the towns, talk to people, and in this game it adds a new layer that the characters actually have something to say about what these people have to say, which I think is terrific. It really adds to the depth of character personality that they have, like in the original NES, in the in the blah, NES version, in the in the original um, NES version, there was no party talk, and you these characters were just kind of stock characters in the essence of, hey, this girl's a, the younger sister, she's she's nice and she's just a fortune teller. That's all you know about her. Boom. The dancer, all she was was a dancer, and she was the older of the two. They wanted revenge, that's about it. <coughs> I mean, you knew that M Maya was a uh, casino, she liked the casino. But that's basically all you knew about it. Like, Crystal, you knew that he was in love, or Kirill, you knew he was in love with Elena. Bray, you knew he was like some old guy. He was kind of grouchy. Anyways, this guy is, is uh, kind of, and like Ragnar, you didn't really know much about him at all. Either, and Tulum, kind of. Anyways, this guy is giving us a tour of the town, showing us all the sights, and apparently there's this terrific looking armor that's here. And there's a guy named Balbud, and he uh, saved this village from monsters way back in the day. And, that's tech and that is his armor back there. So that's pretty cool. So I like the idea that they did add party talk. It really, it really fleshes out the characters a lot. And apparently this town is also known for hot springs, which is pretty cool. And apparently this guy is trying to sell us on his inn. What a pitch, huh? The idea of talk, of finding newcomers to come to town, showing them around, and then being like, Hey, why don't you stay at my place? Probably a lot of people think about it because he's such a nice guy, and he would show us around town. But you don't really need to uh, stay around town. I mean, it's such a small town; you really don't need to uh, have to worry about it. So yeah, in the beginning, as we go through the game, I won't be going through like. Anyways, let's buy an iron shield for uh, for solo. We can't get one for my Mina yet. Eventually get one for her. So yeah, as we play through the game, we'll be having lots of party talk. But I will not be going back to like old towns. Like uh, uh, there will be a few exceptions, but I won't be like going back to old towns and having the characters talk there. Like I'm just gonna try and maintain uh, any new areas and stuff. And I won't be like leaving town with like a certain group of people. And then coming back into town with the other certain another four characters because we're gonna get eight in total. Well, nine in total, but we're gonna get eight. And uh, I'm not gonna come back into town and talk with them as you know. I'm not gonna have every character come in and talk. So what, the beautiful thing is that it's a let's play. It's my version of it. And, uh, yeah, if you really want to see everyone talk, definitely play it yourself or use different combinations. Uh, I think, uh, I think this game is, is a, 
It was great. I think what was it, twelve dollars, fifteen bucks? Totally worth it. Totally worth it. It is different than the DS version, but uh, I like. There's a couple things that are different, like text is different and some stuff. But other than that, it's been so far. It's pretty much DS version. And yeah, I will fix this uh, this like blurry thing. I think I was able to fix it. Apparently my connection was not connected all the way, and what, I, what I'm doing is trying to connect it all the way. So, Ballad is Knight of Old, and he saved the whole town with, with, uh, with whatever. But there's, a, there's actually a, uh, something shining over here. Let's grab it. What is it? It is a strength seed. All these seeds and stuff I'm not actually going to use until much later. Until I get a certain character that's my favorite, if you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, let's head to the church. There's a bath and a church. And behind the church is where that guy's armor is, and apparently I can't see it in the morning. And so what he did was he fought off all these monsters, and what happened was he ended up dying, but he killed all the monsters. That's a real hero. Well, that's a good question. Why were they attacking the town? And how long ago did this happen? This is one of those tales I assume just happened a long, long time ago. And here we go, we get a mini metal. Let's talk to the old man who's in the hot tub. And look, there's a creepy soldier over there. I bet he's waiting for all the ladies to get in. There's always got to be one of those guys, right? Yeah, well, I gotta explore the bath. Oh, and there's a town to the south called Porthrunnel. Apparently, that might not be the armor. It's nothing special. Then where did the real armor go? Anyways, let's check out this guy's... This guy's inn. Wow, it's pretty shitty. I mean, he's got a... I mean, I'll steal this shield all day. No, sorry, hero tax. Anyways, that guy's inn is tiny. Actually, interesting thing about his inn is, is even it's expensive, more expensive than the one that we uh, that we stayed at for sure. But at least he's out there busting his hump trying to get new people to come in. Not like that other innkeeper, just relies on his reputation, which I guess you could do. Anyways, here's the bar. And apparently Tulum was uh, heading south. Probably that's where he's getting a ship. Especially if the town's called Port Thrunnel. Port Thrunnel. Whatever the hell it's called. And this guy's a nice guy because he took his dear old dad brought him here, and he brought him to the spa. How nice. That's a good son. So apparently no one is here at night. I can just steal whatever the hell I want. Interesting thing um, about those bags in the back hanging on the wall. The only game that I've noticed... No, there's two games that I've noticed that you can actually look in the back. You can look in the bags. Dragon Quest 8 and Dragon Quest 7 were originated. I think Dragon Quest 7 is a real, is a real, like, uh, I don't know, it, it, it like, uh, made Dragon Quest kind of step up a notch by adding some certain things. So apparently Taloon is loaded. I mean, I guess he is since he, uh, yeah, she wants, she wants friggin', uh, casino tokens. 
But I guess he kind of is because, I mean, he's buying a freaking ship. Must be expensive. Hell, in the last game, Dragon Quest 3, the way they got a ship was you just had to get some black pepper. Oh, and he's getting the Zenith and Ar Zenith and Armor. Okay, so he wants us to find the armor. Apparently, monsters stole it. But let's see. Let's take a look at this armor anyways. Blah, 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 blah. You say the same thing day or night. This, uh, ugh, it's not even, it's not even, uh, the correct, uh, correct armor, although it is nice and shiny, bright and shiny, which I guess is good to keep up appearances, and this is, uh, this is gonna be a, a running, uh, thing, we're gonna read about this guy named Roland, and he's looking for a staff, he actually lived in Lakanaba, La and then he moved over to Zamoska. And the king wants him to find the staff for him. This will come into play later. Oh, he ca she called him a dirty old man instead of a flat-chested bimbo, like she did in the uh, in, with the girl. Interesting with the heroine. Anyways, let's head down to Port Funnel. Apparently, I'm not going to get attacked. Alright, so let's see if I can make this day. And then I don't want the rest of the end. Hey, look! New enemies! Fly guy and metal... <coughs> metal uh, slimes. Which I don't know if we've run into yet in this entire game. And metal slimes work uh, like uh, uh, metal slimes in other games, obviously. Uh, you have to kill them, of course, and they drop a ton of experience. They give you a ton of experience. Thing is, they like to run away, and uh, they have a, a lot of defense. So one of the only ways that you can really destroy them in one hit is with a critical, because that ignores defense. But they do have super high defense. I'm not sure if you can, um, they're vulnerable to spells, and I don't know what else. I think that's really it. People should know how metal slimes work, but I'm just explaining it anyways. If you can kill metal slime, you'll get like over a thousand experience for each character. If you kill two, you get a shit ton. Now there are also metal babbles, or metal, liquid metal slimes, and there's also metal king slimes give you a shit ton of experience as well. Later we'll be able to turn the tables on how we'll be able to beat them. But for the time being, uh, you just have to fight them. Like regular. And Mina and Maya and Solo all went up levels, which is terrific. Anyways, is it daytime yet? Alright, cool. So this is, uh, Port Thrunnel. Port Thrunnel. I don't know if it's supposed to be some sort of joke or whatever, but whatever. Anyways, yeah, it does remind Mina of, uh, you know, that town that they had to run away from their hometown. Uh, have a Leon, Le Leon. And look at that, we got another tiny metal. Isn't that terrific? Anyways, so like I said, we're going to explore this town in the morning and explore it at night. And then that'll be that. Interesting. Interesting. The Lord of Underworld is coming back to life. Well, if I'm a hero, and that's what I am, and apparently I have the power to defeat anything, I'm pretty sure I can handle it. But at this point, monsters are kind of, you know, they've got the edge right now. They're beating humans right now. They're not, you know, humans are kind of like just, just kind of just keeping it together. You know what I mean? And apparently there's a pharaoh's beacon around here. It's sort of like a lighthouse. And it looks like monsters have taken it over. And 
and so we're gonna have to do something about that because they did something that's making ships sink, which is not good, especially if we want to get a ship. But I wonder if Taloon is around. Maybe he can friggin' uh, come with us. That'd be pretty nice. And look over here, there's a there's a door we can't go into. Apparently it's a forbidden room. Oh, scary. So apparently people are dying because the boats are sinking because of that Pharaoh's lighthouse. That's pretty sad. giving off an evil light. And over here, in the NES version, this woman would be very helpful. Because she would actually give you a map, I think. No, no, no. Actually, she never gave you a map. Never mind. Because we would get a map from the NES, or in the NES version from the next town that we go to. Yeah, that woman never had a map. And it's bullshit, because even Mina or Maya, I didn't see who. I know I might be going through a little quick, but Mina and Maya even know this is like, why advertise that you're even open if you have nothing for sale? And here's uh, chapter two of this guy's magical quest. So now he's traveling the world looking for a magical staff. And uh, now he's looking for that staff, maybe he'll find one. I know exactly which staff he's talking about, so it's all good. Anyways, uh, weapon shop, I don't think there's anything new. If you didn't get the broadsword, I would advise getting it now. Um, and then, uh, let's see the armor, which I will purchase some of it. Like the iron shield I'll eventually purchase, and also there is some golden tiaras, which are pretty good, and I'm going to buy a couple. I actually will get one in the ne next area, but I want to buy one. Let's see, let's sell this. Is there anything else for us to sell? So let's purchase the golden tiara for Maya, since her defense is lower than Mina's. That's it. Alright, so let's talk to you. So yeah, these two also sell weapons and armor, but they will actually never sell any... Well, actually they might sell stuff if we fix the port and get our boats back. Oh, there's a town called Mintos to the south. Some guy there, he's a pretty good merchant or something. That's good to know. He's called the Wizard of Commerce. <laughs> Why didn't the goddess bless me with riches? And so, yeah, apparently Taloon has gone over to the lighthouse. I don't know if someone said it yet, but... That is where he went. Anyways, this place is pretty uh, exp uh, expansive. There's two ships here, and there's a lot of barrels and stuff to break. And so, people are afraid to take their boats out with that lighthouse being under the control of evil guys. So let's, let's just keep breaking this stuff. There's gotta be something here. In the NES version, you couldn't come all the way over here and look at all this stuff. You couldn't break pots and pans. You could really only look at what was in front of you. And if so, there was a, a barrel or whatever behind it, another barrel, you and you couldn't reach it, there was nothing in that barrel. Yeah, Dragon Quest VI, I mean, Dragon Quest VII opened up a lot of, a lot of new things for the Dragon Quest series, such as breaking barrels and pots and whatever, checking to see if they have items, checking bags, party talk, a lot of good stuff. So this ship belongs to, I believe this one belongs to Taloon. Apparently he's purchased the ship, but he doesn't want to uh, go anywhere with it because he's afraid that the ship will sink, which sounds reasonable. And it 
it's a good idea to check the ship now because eventually we won't be able to ever. Like in Dragon Quest IX, that's one nice thing about that, is that you can actually go in your ship and check it out. There's actually some nice treasures in there, but you can't get them until you get the ultimate key. So you can always go inside your ship. They should let you do that in this game, it'd be kind of neat. And then you can come in and talk with everybody or not. They can give you some advice on where to go next. That'd be kind of neat. Anyways, whoops, I forgot to check something. Let's come up here, open this up, and go to the door. Check that out, get some magic water, holy water, whatever. Yep. Yep, he's making some sacrifices, that's for sure. Hopefully his wife will understand. I hope his wife understands. If I were her, I'd be pretty ticked off and be like, yo, husband, where are you? But she's a good woman. Because she could be sleeping around right now with somebody. Leaving with for a new leaving for a new uh a new dude or something. Yeah, so he went he went to the damn lighthouse by himself, so we better we better head over there eventually. After we finish exploring the town here. But first, let's explore this ship. Which I want to say might be the same ship... Might be the same ship that, uh... The, uh... The sisters are on. Because it couldn't go back to have a Le Leon. So it probably came here instead. And Endor technically doesn't have a port, unless it's there and we just never, we never got the opportunity to explore it or whatnot, I'm not exactly sure how that, is, how that works, but yeah, if we come over here, I'm pretty sure everything, I don't know, maybe not, maybe this isn't the same ship, huh, interesting, cargo with priceless armor, hey, look at that, we got a mini metal, that's very good, That's pretty interesting. Hmm. Anyways, let's come up over here and talk to these people. And he's not leaving. Not until the Pharaoh's beacon is fixed. No, I don't want to look at this bookshelf again. I guess Elena's group has, is, is in Mintos. Maybe we can catch up with them. But we can't leave until uh, we actually uh, head over there. Or actually fix the lighthouse. So anyways, let's come over here, talk to this woman, and end the episode. Anyways, I'm going to stop the video here. In the next episode, we will check out this place at night, then head over to the Pharaoh's lighthouse.